into fruition that actually somebody's going to actually use it to produce something. Mm. Come here, come here, and come here, and nothing ever gets produced in your life. But misery and stress, and then people end up walking away from God because they don't understand how God works. Mm -hmm. Why am I so miserable and so stressed out? When God loves me unconditionally, He's molding and shaping me through all these issues I gotta go through so I can be what? Peace, loving, gentle, and patient at all times. Yeah. Amen. He's doing that to crucify your flesh and you're not letting it. You're getting bitter, not better. Now, listen, we all need to evaluate this, especially as we grow in this ministry. Are you getting bitter from understanding God's hand chastening you and trying to make something out of you? Or are you getting better? There's people, you can see it on their faces that they're getting bitter. Saying, wow. I want to see everybody get better. This is why the Bible is corrective to get us better. Yeah. See, when we got pride in our hearts still, we can't get better. We get bitter. Pride is a, is a number one thing that blocks us from understanding God's ways. Yeah. We get prideful. And, and we think that, well, God, why aren't you acting? Why aren't you doing this for me? I've been praying and praying and praying. And because God says, well, you know, you're not ready for that right now. i got to do a little bit more breaking of you before I can bless you. <laughs> What's the matter? I didn't rub the lamp long enough? <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> we get bitter because we want something from God and then He's not giving it to us and God's saying, what can I do? You never really let go of your sinful nature so I can't give it to you. It's going to take you away from me if I give you that. Yeah. So I don't give it to you until you're mature. Look, spiritual maturity is the key to get blessed when you can handle the blessing. So you have to get mature enough to handle the blessing God wants to give you. But if you're not mature enough, God's going to say, well, if I give you this blessing, you're only going to walk away from me. God bless, bless you. you. Thank, Thank you. So, if you understand that, say, well, I need to grow up spiritually so I can get blessed. And until I do, I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, he provides for us. Look at us. None of us look deprived. Mm -hmm. But if we want God's best in the land of the living, well, there's things that have to get done. He's got to do some work in us. Mm -hmm. We all need an overhaul. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And not from Chip Fuchs. <laughs> we need an overhaul from Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? We'll let Chip Foos overhaul the cars. Well, somebody knows the, the show Overhaul. Oh. The oh. guy's Chip. The guy, I, I work in the, in the auto body industry. It's the guy that takes someone's car that's a, a mess in the garage and the wife wants to fix it for the husband and he gets the car and he takes it and they pretend like they're towing the car away. And they take it in the garage, overhaul the car, make it brand new again. Yeah. Take it off the chassis, put all new things in there, and then they give it to the, they show it to the guy after. All done. It's called overhaul. Not you. I need that kind of. Oh, look, we all need to get overhaul. The, the sooner you get to understand that you need an overhauling. The sooner you can relax and say, well, God's working on me. Thank Amen. God He is. Amen. Amen. I need it. Amen. And stop pointing on other people's problems and say, what's wrong? I need, my, I need to fix me. Mm -hmm. I need the overhaul and not other people. Look, well, if you act this way, my life's going to get better. If you do all these things, my life's going to get better. If I get this, my life's going to get better. And then you get all these. Look, what if it doesn't happen? You're waiting on that to get better instead of God making you better. Mm -hmm. He said, look, I want you to accept them the way they are. What if they never change? That's your thorn. Yep. You have to trust me all the way to the end. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thorn. I can, more than one. How about you? Yes. The things just ain't going away. <laughs> I'm saying either you're going to accept it and trust God and pass the test and eventually it might go away, but either way, he might not ever remove it. There might be consequences for our actions that never get removed. Mm -hmm. We just have to live with it. <clears throat> Guess what? He's God and we're not. So that's... I don't want anybody to get better. Is anybody getting better with God? Mm -hmm. Don't answer that. 
These are self-evaluating questions. Look what it says. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown right, verse 21. And then we'll close. Abraham was shown right to be with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. See, Abraham was shown to be right with God. The law wasn't even given yet. Abraham was a patriarch. There was no law yet. No. He was shown right with God by his actions. He offered his son. He trusted God. That's imagine, amazing. That's amazing. Imagine what he did. Abraham couldn't get a son. Remember? He, he got one to yep. Ishmael, yeah. the bondswoman. Yeah. 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 He finally got one, and God says, No, I want you to sacrifice him to me. Wow, that was bad. And guess what he did? He went to, he went to go and do it. Yeah. All the way to when he was going to plunge that night, yeah. and the angel said, No. Wow. Yeah. That's what counted him as right. He trusted God all the way to the end of that. Yep. Think about that. That's what counted him as righteousness. Look at that was his faith in God. Yeah. You see, faith and his act. Look, you see, his faith and his actions work together. You see it? Mm -hmm. He showed his faith by his act. Imagine saying, God wants to take something <coughs> that's really dear to you yeah. from you. Are you willing by faith to give it to him? And then he'll show you. Where your faith is. And his actions were together. His action made his faith complete. You see? If you want your faith to be complete, it has to be shown by your actions. That's what the fruit of your salvation is talking about. Mm -hmm. Show it up. The ripeness of you coming to Bible study, learning about Jesus, getting crucified of the flesh, and now there's some fruit showing up. The completeness of your salvation. But it shows up by your actions. That's how you know it's coming to completion. Yeah. Well, I know they were rude to me, but you know, they're probably just having a bad day. I'm yeah. just gonna say a prayer for them. Yeah. Instead of saying, how rude. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's real faith. How rude. When God sent that person, that rude person, to test you. Yeah. yeah. God sent the rude person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you just say, wow, <coughs> I didn't know how to grow up to do. Amen. And I'm just not going to play church. I'm going to come here and I'm going to learn and I'm going to apply it and I'm going to trust and obey because there's no better way to be happy in Jesus. You want to be happy in your Christian life? You have to trust and obey. Two key ingredients to living a successful Christian life. All right, we're going to stop there. All right, so just remember where we left off, right? Verse 25. Verse 25. We'll continue when we get together again. Brittany's going to come up and sing. We're going to stand and then we're going to close. Thanks, John. Thank you, John.